Good morning to everybody. My name is Francesco Nesi. I'm director of Zephyr, Passive House Italia, the um, Italian uh, Building Physics Institute, which is the Italian representative of Passive House Institute in Darmstadt. Um, today we are focusing ourselves on the five pillars uh, which are the basics uh, of Passive House. Mm, we will investigate more in detail a couple of projects which we chose uh, residential and non-residential building uh, always with the focus on the five Passive House pillars. So the first one is the Casa Spano uh, done by Studio Caroso uh, close to Turin which is a residential project. The second one is uh, part of uh, several EU funded projects, uh, which is the La Providenza, namely a community church building uh, which has been refurbished up to the Passive House standard and done by Studio Bombazaro in Pergine, Valsugana, close to Trento. So let's uh, go more in detail uh, concerning the five Passive House pillars. So, in principle, uh, the details matter. So it's very important that uh, the design is very accurate and that there's an um, integrated process among all professionals who cooperate in order to make the details as um, accurate as possible, in order to minimize the efforts and in the end the costs for the customer. So the first thing is to prevent uh, thermal losses. Namely, we have to focus on the external insulation, uh, which have to be, which has to be as continuous as possible. Um, in this way, the heat which is inside the building remains there, and in the summer, uh, the other way around. So the heat remains outside. Of course, in summer, the issue will be uh, the internal gains, uh, which have to be reduced as fast as possible, otherwise they, they will not be um, uh, lost through the outer shell, which is very well insulated. So, the second point is uh, low E, triple or double glazing, depending on the climate. Uh, in principle, the windows uh, are to be chosen in a way that the overall energy balance is positive. In other terms, uh, for instance, the windows on the northern facade will always lo lose energy on, on the average because you only get diffuse radiation as uh, external solar gains, whereas the uh, which is not able to compensate the thermal losses through the windows itself. But if we are good enough to distribute the other windows on the other facades in a way that the overall balance is positive, which means in the end I put a window on a facade and I gain energy, then uh, I'm done because in the end I just heat up the house only through the solar gains. Uh, which is for free, of course. And in summer, uh, we have only to close uh, the windows, the shutters, or whatever you have uh, in order to provide some external shading in a way that the uh, incoming solar gains are prevented. Uh, a very important concept in each kind of low uh, energy building which is passive house in this case, is the concept of air tightness. Uh, air tightness means that uh, we have to design uh, uh, in, uh, a continuous line, a polyline on our CAD files or on our projects, sketches and so on, in a way that all the drafts uh, are, uh, are avoided. Uh, in some sense. Uh, this uh, helps for the comfort for sure of the occupants inside the building and on the other way, on the other side, 
uh, it prevents that humidity uh, which always follows the heat flux which is from inside to the outside during the winter season uh, flows through the drafts uh, inside the building assemblies uh, where uh, colder and colder layers are, uh, are, are met and in some points the humidity uh, would condensate somewhere and of course in realizing the continuous line uh, for the airtight layer is very important because then it prevents uh, damages on the external shell and or on the uh, load bearing layer uh, which has to be as dry as possible during the whole winter season so not only then uh, for to summarize not only then uh, to save energy but also to prevent eventual damages like mold growth or condensation and uh, or uh, structural damages. Of course, uh, thermal bridges are to be uh, minimized as far as possible or sold, uh, avoided. And this has to be uh, designed properly in the preliminary phase. Uh, there are some who cannot be avoided, and of course, uh, they should only be minimize as fast as possible as far as possible there are some others uh, who can be avoided through the integrate process design process by speaking among all the professionals and finding out the best solution how to, to avoid them in the end thermal bridge is just a mathematical uh, object let's say um, uh, which accounts for the real flux uh, in comparison to what has been declared in the energy balance uh, according to the regular elements which we can define concerning external wall, uh, roof, uh, floor slab and so on. In the end, if you want, it's just uh, a weak point in the building where the heat flux changes direction or where, I don't know, there's, for, for instance, a reduction in the uh, thickness of the insulation and so on. In the end, uh, also concerning thermal bridges, it's very important to remind that this is not only a, an issue, a matter of energy saving, but also uh, for avoiding mold growth or condensation of humidity. Uh, due to the low, very low internal surface temperatures. So in the end, we also need to change the air in order to get some fresh air inside the building. And this um, is done through the installation of a ventilation unit with heat, with heat recovery, up to 90, 94%. Uh, this is a very important object, let's say, sort of lung of our passive house uh, because you can exchange the air inside the building in two ways uh, either by opening the windows, uh, manual, by manual ventilation uh, which of course uh, let the internal heat flows, uh, flow away without any recovery on the other hand, you can install such a unit uh, where the exhaust air uh, is, is extracted from, from the kitchen, from the bathrooms and so on, is brought to the uh, passive uh, uh, heat recovery system inside the, build, the, the ventilation unit. Uh, parallel, in the parallel, um, the, the external air is taken to the ventilation unit is filtered uh, by pollen and smog and without any uh, touching between the upcoming air and the incoming air the heat is given naturally and on a, uh, in a passive way to the incoming air which comes in uh, in the bedrooms, in the uh, living rooms and so on without uh, uh, so being heated somehow, which means maybe it's 
it's 20, 22 degrees here on the extract air side. On the other hand, maybe it's 17 degrees. Uh, the temperature of the incoming air, of the supply air, uh, which has to be then uh, post heated uh, in a way that we can provide our building the necessary heat load uh, in order to maintain on the, uh, on the heating load day uh, the internal temperature up to 20 degrees, which is the uh, comfort temperature during the winter season. Uh, of course, in summer we can uh, open the windows and we should open the windows, uh, but if and only if this uh, has some ga uh, overall gains uh, in terms of reduction of internal temperature, internal overheating, but also uh, preventing the fact that the maybe humid uh, external air uh, is brought into the building, which has to be then uh, get rid of in an active way. In this case, maybe it's better not to open the windows, but just uh, using the ventilation system plus an uh, active cooling system, like a fan coil or split or whatever, uh, which then reduces the internal temperature without adding up some extra humidity. Uh, excess humidity which then provides some discomfort. So these are the five passive pillars and we will uh, look closer to them uh, regard, uh, com as far as a couple of project concern. Uh, the first project is located in Castiglione Torinese close to Turin. Uh, PHPP, uh, so the design package for designing a passive house is used uh, in order to see how the building behaves in, um, upon several certain climatic conditions, several um, solar exposure and so on. So as far as thermal insulation is concerned, uh, we have always to use the pensive rule. So we have on all sketches, on all um, uh, elevations on all sections and so on, we have to draw uh, a single insulation layer which encloses the, the thermal envelope, which is the heated volume. Uh, and uh, on the same uh, situation, we have to do the same as far as air tightness is concerned on the internal side, uh, which also have, has to be a single uh, polyline inside our building. So the air tightness we will, which we will uh, look closer to in a couple of slides uh, is also a very important concept which has to be designed already on the preliminary phase. Uh, the same on the sec all sections and, and plans and so on, as you see. Uh, then we have to in, we have to look closer to the different um, uh, regular elements which constitute the thermal envelope. So we have to identify some U values which are similar or which are the same, and we have to indicate them on our elevations in order to look closer to this. For instance, here we have wall to ground of the basement which has a certain U value on, in yellow uh, there's the um, wall to uh, ambient uh, air to external air which has another uh, U value and so on. So we have to assign them to the respective surfaces and input in the PHPP. Uh, as you see also building assembly for building assembly we have to input them here and then get out the U value out of it. And this is how it looks in the reality. Uh, concerning uh, elements to the ground, uh, there's uh, some specialties to be uh, taken into account. In fact, for instance, we, here we have a heated basement where the floors level of the heat ba heated basement uh, touches the ground. 
uh, as well as the exter ex as well as the external walls of the basement. Whereas in this case, there's only frost lab uh, touching the ground, and of course, there are two different situations which has to be taken into account according to the uh, EN 13370. Uh, windows, so second pillar, uh, we have to, to individuate them on the, on, the, on the drawings and the fitting is also very important. In this case, for instance, the fitting uh, is thought to be here. Maybe it would be better uh, that this was here, but in fact, in order to reduce the, the um, the thermal bridge on the installation and also to enhance the, uh, the solar gains because we have less shading done by the, provided by the uh, external insulation but of course on the overall balance uh, this was enough to reach to hit the passive house targets and in the end it was chosen to be like this uh, the, this is how uh, the windows look like in this case uh, and this is how the glazing as, uh, assemblies look like they are to be input in the PHPP in the glazing area in the window frame area and then input uh, as a let's say a hole uh, where you put your window uh, on the respective building assembly uh, external wall, roof or whatever so, as far as solar gain is concerned, we have to take into account all possible shading uh, elements. Uh, for instance, the, the, the reveals or the overhang, which in this case is just the uh, insulation thickness and so on, and uh, which accounts for a certain reduction from 100%, which means all solar gains go uh, through the uh, through the windows inside the building. In this case, it accounts, for instance, uh, for 15% uh, reduction. Uh, and the same holds also for external objects like neighboring building, mountain, or whatever. Uh, let's come to the very tightness. As said, uh, we have to, this was provided in this case by the interior plaster. Uh, as you can see more or less on this side for instance this is very important uh, that this is done also before the installation of building services uh, because otherwise there are some parts uh, uh, behind the building services themselves which you cannot reach anymore in a future design st uh, step uh, so in this case we have to design it properly before and you have to have in mind always that air tightness uh, you cannot buy on the building site, you have to design. This is very important. Uh, also concerning window installation, we have to think how to realize it uh, in a very good way, like expanded metal plaster base here, uh, which is connected to the to the plaster from the left hand side to the right hand side to the frame which is airtight uh, by definition by, because the pro producer uh, gives it like uh, airtight uh, and the same holds for the vertical section and this is how it is realized on the building side uh, also concerning the bottom uh, installation, this is very important to think how the internal airtight layer, which is in this case plaster, is connected to the, uh, to the frame. So in this case there was some butyl tape uh, on some expanded polystyrene, which is connected to the frame through a self-expanded tape. So also in this case, uh, we need some experts uh, like Passivos designer who can provide the right uh, choices, the right design and solutions, how to realize it. The test 
the air tightness test uh, is called blower door. It is basically done by uh, ventilation uh, fan, uh, which is put inside some some uh, shell, let's say, which is connected to our uh, thermal envelope, uh, which is driven and which produces a sort of uh, pressure drop between inside and outside. Uh, up to 100 pascals and it ranges from few pascals like 10 or 20 up to 100 pascals and for each pressure drop a measurement is done in order to look closer to the N50 value uh, which is the uh, coefficient which accounts for how much our building is airtight or not and during the build, uh, blow a door test, all the craftspeople, craftsmen are brought inside the building site and possible eventual leakages are corrected and individuated and in the end uh, we can hit the goal of 0 0,6 uh, um, H uh, air change rate uh, at 50 Pascal pressure drop, which is the target to be reached uh, for reaching the uh, passive house requirements. And this is how it looks like. In this case, uh, 0,5 was reached and it, it was enough to get the passive house certification. As far as thermal bridges are concerned, uh, let's let look closer to the, to the thermal bridge issue. Here, for instance, on the basement, uh, on the detail between external wall of the basement to the floor slab of the basement, this is how it looks like closer. And of course, the, we have always to follow the uh, thermal envelope layer uh, in order to see how long is the floor slab, how high is the external wall and the rest uh, is put in a psi value which uh, makes uh, which gets back to the real uh, heat flux which flows uh, out of the uh, building the same holes for instance from this side here we had some other um, situation also with the installation of a, of a window uh, to go out from this room uh, which makes the things more complicated here in this case we have some intermediate floor uh, with some with some um, uh, disalignment of the external wall to a, a, a same first floor uh, external floor uh, then ventilation. The ventilation concept was already uh, explained. Somehow fresh air flows into the living areas of the house. Uh, the used air is extracted from kitchen, bathrooms, uh, WCs. Uh, everything is brought to the uh, air to air heat exchanger. In the meantime, if here is extracted and here we have some supply air, of course the corridors are ventilated automatically at the same time. The heat contained in the extract air is transferred to the cold fresh air uh, which has been purified through filters uh, before being brought inside the building. And here we have a possible heating coil which heat up the supply air in order to provide our building uh, the necessary heating load. If it's not enough to cover the overall heating load, then some active, extra active, active system is needed, but then it's just a few watts left in order to uh, put the temperature to the set point temperature in winter, which is 20 degrees. Uh, for the purpose of frost protection, fresh air could be eventually preheated through some 
uh, subsoil heat exchanger, air, air or uh, glycol mixture, air or whatever it is uh, uh, designed. In the end, several things are done through the ventilation system, not only uh, putting into the building some fresh air, but also uh, providing the necessary heat load through uh, the post heater or and in summer uh, post cooler if we also can uh, make use of the supply air to cool down the building during the summer. This is how the distribution looks like. We have to minimize as far as possible the single lines uh, and provide a, a very good uh, ventilation inside all the uh, supply uh, inside the building by identifying the supply zones, uh, the extract zones and then the uh, transfer air like uh, zones like the stair landings or staircase and so on. And of course the ventilation system should be located as closer as possible to the external uh, air in order to minimize the lines between machine and uh, ambient air uh, which uh, are in the end thermal bridges which reduce the overall efficiency of the ventilation system. So risk of mold can be reduced, uh, of course during refurbishment this is very important to be installed because then occupants maybe do not open the window to ventilate and this could cause some mold growth or condensation and discomfort. So the, coming to the second project, we just saw everything, I wanted just to show you how this looks like, this is located in Trento, close to Trento, in Terzine Val Sudana. This, is a, this was the existing building uh, and the idea was to extend it or redo it uh, with a new extension just by cutting it and uh, realizing it through a seismic joint between the both parts uh, this is done by in, in brick and this is done by stones and of course uh, we had to, this is the first step of the refurbishment we had to uh, get rid of some uh, basic issues uh, which are related to the previous five pillars for instance uh, as far as thermal bridges are concerned as far as air tightness is concerned uh, these are some concrete pillars uh, to the floor slab in the basement uh, which remain of course so we have to minimize the, these punctual thermal bridges as far as possible uh, by providing a sufficient high uh, surface internal temperature uh, which, which uh, avoids the mold growth or condensation and at the same time by reaching the heating demand uh, limit which is 15 kilowatt hours per square meter year uh, the air tightness of the intermediate ceiling in this case as you see all the wooden uh, rafters uh, 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 function as uh, air distributors let's say because they are not airtight so we have to realize it by plastering better here and of course this is also made by straw uh, and wooden parts and this was just a very challenging issue to be solved uh, in the end they got something like N50 like 0,3 or something like this which is very, uh, a very good result uh, term, as far as thermal bridges is concerned, as you see, they have to be identified also on the sections and the airtight layer is to be uh, designed properly before going to the building site. And this is how it looks like, there are some punctual thermal bridges also uh, on the, under the roof. Uh, here is, for instance, how the typical uh, Trentinian uh, marble frames are uh, 
taken again on the, on the new uh, installed windows, but in a way that the thermal bridges are more or less solved as far as possible by installation of some wooden part behind it and not having a continuous uh, marble layer from inside to outside. So in some sense also traditional architecture can be preserved also during the refurbishments. And here is how it looks like uh, after the realization. This is a very uh, nice example of refurbishment. This is how it was before and now it is how it looks like after the refurbishment. So in the end, passive house can also be applied not only to the new buildings but also to the refurbishment. Thank you for listening to this and hope to see you here again for uh, some other talks.